Hoyer Pro Journey is a 340 pound weight capacity active lift and is part of the Hoyer Professional Series lifts. Before using the Journey, please read and review the operators and users manuals that come with the lift. The Journey, as I said, is an active lift or a sit to stand lift and is involved in active transfers where your patient or resident actively participates in the transfer. Before using the lift, please ensure that your resident or patient has three qualifications, those being that they bear weight, which means they have at least one leg and bear at least 10% body weight. They have trunk strength, which is easily indicated by sitting them up at the edge of the bed and if we take our hands away from them, they sag over or fall over. If they do that, they're not a good candidate. And lastly, that they participate in the transfer. For those patients or residents who can't hold on to the grips but still participate, or for those who are weak on one side or the other but still participate, this is a very great lift for increasing their dignity and quality of life. For those who do not participate in the lift, this is not necessarily the right product to use. Now the Journey has a 340 pound weight capacity, as I said, and is operated from hand control for raising and lowering and for opening and closing the base by foot pedal. And you can see the ergonomics are still maintained with that foot pedal because I'm still keeping my spine neutral and standing behind the lift instead of using a spreader bar or any other mechanism. Below the remote, we've got a battery, and with the journey, you'll get two batteries with the lift and a charger. So one battery will be on the lift and one will be on a charger to give you continuous use of the lift. Below the battery is our emergency stop with a big red button, and the emergency stop button is used in two instances. One, we push it in if there is an emergency or something we need to immediately correct during the lift. We simply push it in to disengage the lift and then turn it to the right and it'll pop back out to re-engage. The other time we would use this is when we're turning the lift off to save the battery. By turning it off, the lift won't drain, the battery won't drain, and we'll have longer lift life. Turning it to the right when we're ready to use it ensures that we're ready to go. Below that big red button, there are two indicators with an up and a down arrow. We can use the tip of a pen and push in lightly on each one of them to raise or to lower the lift if for some reason the remote stops working but we still have power to the battery or to the lift rather the battery still has a charge. Below those two indicators the last thing on the bottom of the control box is the battery meter which gives us an idea of how much battery charge we have left and it's like the fuel gauge on our car full three quarters half quarter when it gets down to a quarter there's a picture of a power plug indicating it's time to charge the battery if we get below that quarter, it says the word stop, letting us know that there's not enough charge to complete a safe transfer. Now, below those, I already talked about the foot pedals that will allow us to open or close the legs. In addition to that, we have wheel locks on the backs of both of the rear wheels. The only time we engage the wheel locks is when we're parking the lift, storage, when we're done using it. We do not lock the locks for transfers from chair to bed. We do not lock the locks from transfers bed to chair. As I said, we simply lock the locks and we're ready to transfer it. Now moving forward to the front of the lift, there's an emergency descent lever where my right hand is. And the emergency descent is used for instances where we have a patient or resident in the lift, we're completing a transfer and something happens that shuts the lift off. And rather than manually trying to lower them, we can simply pull this, lip, this lever up and by doing so about a half an inch, as long as there's weight on the cradle, it'll lower itself back down. Normally speaking, we can replace our battery or, or replace our remote, but in those instances where nothing works, we can use that emergency descent. The cradle on the journey is unique in that it's adjustable for our different patient and resident sizes. As you can see, I've got a red, a yellow, and a green indicator, along with the S for small, M for medium, and L for large. And what I can do with this cradle is I can adjust the height to fit my patient or resident's needs. For the majority of our folks, the medium is going to be a good position. But for those who are a little bit smaller of stature, we can lower it to the red for small to give us more transfer ability with that resident or patient. And for those that are a little bit taller or larger, we can move it to the large position, again, doing the same thing. And what I'm doing simply is pulling back on the adjustment lever, and then with my left hand, I'm adjusting the cradle to where I need it. Moving to the front of the cradle, we've got gates or retainer clips for the sling. This is where the loops of the sling go and the gates keep the uh, sling in place when it's not got any slack on it. Hand grips on both sides for the resident or patient to use. And the adjustable knee pad or calf strap is simply adjusted by lifting the lever on the mast, raising it up so that we can then lower or raise depending on what we need to do. Likewise, there's a calf strap built in 
The cap strap is designed to be used every time we work with the patient or resident. We're simply going to put that behind their legs. There's a divider built in so we can separate each one and we can adjust that for snug fit. Of course, we're going to have our resident or patient put their feet on the foot plate and get to a comfortable position before we complete our transfer. There are two slings that are available and used for the journey. The first is the deluxe standing sling. The deluxe standing sling is labeled just as all the other Warrior Professional Series slings are with the big arrow pointing up and the word outside printed on it so we know the label goes away from the patient. It's also got an indicator showing how the sling is properly used as well as sizing and laundering. On the inside of the sling, we have non-skid material so that when we put it in place it won't adjust and a simple belt connection. When we put the sling on, we put it at solar plexus height. Not at waist height, but rather at solar plexus height. We want to ensure that it's snug fit. Two finger rule for comfort. And then bring our arm straps in place. And the color indicators on the arm straps are simply so that we ensure proper connection on both sides of the lift. For those patients or residents who were unsure about their weight bearing capabilities, we also have the transport sling labeled just like the deluxe standing sling with a big arrow up, the word outside printed on it, indicators for how it's properly used, sizing, laundering, the same configuration on the inside with the non-skid material and the belt. The big difference between the transport sling and the deluxe standing sling is the transport sling has leg straps which will give you a little bit of support that those questionable residents or patients might need.